Hey yo man, if you're trying to promote yourself to the whole New York City and beyond, get at me. You heard my promo prices is the greatest in the nation, baby. The greatest in the nation. Send me an email at the genpopllc at gmail.com or hit me up on Instagram. Type in St. Laz ST.LAZ on Instagram and get at me. You're gonna do, you're gonna go out there and you're gonna do something stupid? Cause you know that's not what mommy and daddy work hard for all these years. Oh, what you trying to prove you need the big shot? Risking your life cause we need some money back here. We live in Red Hook housing project. In Brooklyn! In Brooklyn! All we got is the streets. Shout out to the bro Black Knowledge. Shout out to the whole Sumner, the whole Bed Star. Shout out to the bro Duran. The whole Bronx. We talking about that prison boxing program at Elmira on this episode. You heard this is legendary. This episode is a movie. A whole movie could be filmed just off of this episode right here. And that's a whole fact. You heard? So comment gang, tear this up. You already snow cone. Z-Man Suicide Polo with the ski man. Let's get it. No spot to me, and this is you know this is just my personal opinion. People would probably have a different different opinion, but no spot was as wild, as live, and as violent as Elmira Correctional Facility, and um, from '88 to '90 when I was there. While I was standing there right there on that line, behind that yellow line, we could get on the phone. A dude got stabbed right in his eye. Spanish dude stabbed another Spanish dude, dead in his eyeball and shit. I don't know if he took his eye up, but dude grabbed his eye and went running, all bleeding and shit. So in my mind, I said, oh, oh yep, yeah, that's what it is. It's lit. This motherfucking place is lit. When I was there from 1988 to 1990, that spot was lit. And all of the spots that I've been to after Elmira, Attica, Comstock, Auburn, Sing Sing, you know what I mean? And uh, whatever else I forgot, I've never been to Clinton, but any other spots that I've been to after that, none of them to me was as wild as Elmira, bro. Elmira was just, that shit was just different. How was that shit the first day you landed in Elmira? <laughs> the first day I landed in Elmira, bro, I went to, um, so I told you I blew trial. I blew trial in 88 and down to HDM and shit. And then I left HDM. I went up to Elmira. So um, when you go up to Elmira, sometimes they, back then, they was putting you in Elmira reception. So I was in um, Elmira reception. So the first day I landed in Elmira reception, this shit was crazy, bro. It was crazy because it, it, it reminded me of... Um, um, not just necessarily the prison movies that I saw, but it reminded me of uh, um, if you see how you see how you would see just animals like caged up, bro. That's how that's what that's what prison in itself reminds me of, man. A bunch of like animals being caged up and shit, and it's just so noisy. The, the level of noise, the volume of noise when you walking down that corridor because you know like they doing the not jail movies and shit. When New Jacks was coming through or whatever dudes be on the gate yelling, saying all sorts of crazy shit, I guess, to see if they can intimidate somebody or get somebody shook or whatever. But um, that shit was a, that was a different process, Elmira reception. But, you know, that's just a, a quarantine process and, and, and they evaluate, evaluate you, classify you, see where you're going to go. So when I left Elmira reception, I got classified as a match eight and they sent me over right over the population. And the very first day that I stepped in Elmira population and I went to the yard, the very, it wasn't even the yard, I went to the armory. They had this thing in Elmira called the armory where they had the telephone booths and it was this big, big, like a big recreation area with basketball courts and, and heavy bags and a whole bunch of, and weights and all sorts of shit inside of like a, 
like a, I don't know, like a dome or some shit like that. But it was real huge. And the first day that I got there, you know, I was going to the phone to get get on the phone, let my people know that I was um out of uh, uh quarantine and and out of reception and in population. The very first day I got there, they got in the phone section in the, in the armory, right? And let's say it's about 20, 30 phones lined up. And then there's a, like a little yellow line that dudes stand behind while they wait for a phone to open up to go get on the phone. While I was standing there right there on that line, behind that yellow line waiting to get on the phone, a dude got stabbed right in his eye. Spanish dude stabbed another Spanish dude dead in his eyeball shit. I don't know if he took his eye up, but dude grabbed his eye and went running all bleeding and shit. So in my mind, I said, oh, oh yep, that's what it is. It's lit. This motherfucking place is lit. And I didn't, so I told you, I learned how to make the joints and all that when I was down in HDM and shit, fucking with certain Spanish dudes and shit. They taught me how to make joints. But when I got the population, I didn't uh, necessarily, you know, see anything yet that I could, could, could make a joint off of. So what I did was, and, 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 and when you first come to Elmira through reception, they give you through um, razors, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? The shaving razor that you shave your face with. So I remember I broke open the razor and it was a, a, a double headed joint. And I um, and I um, stuck the two of them together. I don't know how I did it. I don't know, cause you had Elmer's glue back then and shit. You could buy Elmer's glue and all that. And I used that Elmer's glue a lot throughout my bed to, you know what I mean? Do a lot of different things and shit. But um, I know I had the, the that little double, uh, double shaving razor and I put that together. After I seen Duke get stabbed in his eye, I'm like, oh, I need a weapon. I'm gonna do something for this shit is crazy. I don't know why he got stabbed, what caused it, but Duke got banged out right there in front of me. And I said, yeah, this shit is gonna be crazy. And and, and the enormity of it is of, of is so big that um everywhere you look, it was just so many people and it was just so much shit going on in Elmira. So like around so when I first went to population, I think I was in um, C block. Yeah, I was in C block and shit. And um, I was in there with a dude, my man named P Man, P Man from out of Queens. And um, you know, we used to be up on the gate all night, just chopping up. He giving me Queens wall stories and shit. And I'm I'm telling him about um, uh, Brooklyn wall stories and shit. So when we left. C block and went to general population like I went to G block and P man went to I block and the reason I'm talking about P man is because me, when me and P man got cool and C block through mutual acquaintances when we got in the G when I went to population in G block he went to population in I block G and I block we still see each other sometimes when we go to the yard or army whatever whatever so when I would see him out there you know what I mean? I would be chopping up with him, whatever. Him and his Queens crew, he'd be chopping up me and my Brooklyn dudes. So that's how I first met um, Boxing Shaw. I first met Boxing Shaw through my man P Man from Queens and shit. P Man, that was his man. They were spinning in the yard together, so I don't know how the introduction was made. I don't know if P Man just brought him over, like, yo, nah, this is my man Sha. I mean, good dude, he's from out of Rochester, and son nice with his hands, whatever, whatever. So, cool. You know what I mean? We we, we, we met, we chopped it up, we, we took a liking to each other, like, you know what I mean? So, whenever we saw each other, we'd fuck around with each other, talking, whatever, whatever. But so, after some point in time, I think Sha was the one that told me, like, yo, Nas, bro, they got a, um, a boxing program here. And shit, you should come, you should come sign up for the boxing program because I see you kind of wow, you like to fight and you, you know what I mean? You, you be into a lot of different shit. So come down to the boxing program, ended up, you know what I mean? And help you get some discipline and, and um, teach you how to use your hands. So Shy used to tell me a lot of his war stories about boxing in the street, like, you know, how he was about to, you know, go to Olympics and, and he would have, from the Olympics, how he had plans on turning pro and how he had all of these fights and shit. Uh, um, you know, before he got arrested. So I never seen Sha in the ring. I just seen his uh, little knuckle check in the yard or whatever, you know, situations transpired, whatever. I seen him drop a nigga in the yard real quick, fast on some quick one, two shit. Nigga tried to sneak up on him, do something to him. He slipped it, hit the nigga with a combination, quick, fast, nigga went down. P-Man jumped in the middle, yo, 
laughing. <laughs> Yo, son, he could have done with you, chill, and whatever, whatever. So I said, damn, son, it's kind of fast. So I, I took note of that because I take note of everything, especially dudes that know how to do certain shit. So I'm like, okay, boy, boy, quick with his hands and shit. So you know, that's that's something to, to, to take note of. So so um so from Queens. In our block, our block had a little Queens crew and shit. There was this dude from Queens um, named Macy and shit. Macy was a dude that I knew from from Rikers Island days and shit when I was at HDM. Macy was in HDM with me too. And Macy was like this all around athletic dude, right? He was nice with his hands and shit. Cause I seen him pluck dudes out down there on the island. And he was a real good, good athlete. I'm talking about like he was really nice in basketball. like. In the basketball tournaments that they had in jail, I used to see this dude Nathan put up like 55 and 60 points. This was back in the 80s. That shit was like unheard of, but boy, was just unstoppable on the court. And he was nice in baseball, too. When we'd be out in the yard, shit, he was by the weight section working out, niggas be playing baseball all the way on the other side of the yard, and this dude would be knocking home runs all the way on the roof and shit. And I would see him do that ambidextrous, like swinging. From right side or left side, homie was able to roof them shits. So he was also on a boxing team, and we was already cool from Elmira and I mean from um, Rikers Island HDM shit. So them dudes convinced me like, Yo, Nas, come, 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 join up, check it, come check it out. But but prior to me going to the boxing joint, I was in the weightlifting program. So Elmira was different. Elmira had programs though that they really paid you to go to. Like they had a weightlifting program that they paid you to to lift weights. They taught you how to lift weights and, and you you know, you lift weights and you got paid. It wasn't nothing major, probably a couple of cents a week or whatever the fuck it was, but we still it was a paid program. And the boxing was the paid program. So I was over in um the weight program and I had to go to the counselors or whoever it was that ran the weight programs and get them to sign off, sign me out of the weight program so I could go into the boxing program. And I, I can't remember the dude's name, but they, they was all like little civilian dudes. And they was like, yeah, such and such, you want to go, I heard, I got a request that you want to go over there and join the boxing team or whatever, whatever. You know, that boxing shit is a little bit different. They, you know, it gets a little crazy down there. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, I heard, I, want, I definitely want to go down there, whatever. So they signed my slip, so I can get it. That's what it was called, a program change. I think it was a program change slip. So I had to submit a program change request to get switched from the weight lifting joint to the boxing joint. So. Boom, I got it done, and then I went down to the boxing program. And when I went down to the boxing program, <laughs> yeah, that, that shit was different. That shit was real, real different. So, so the boxing program, right, it consisted of like, you know, however many dudes that signed up for the program, and we was like on a team. It was a civilian, it was a civilian dude that was the instructor, but actually, the dudes that were on the team that were the nicest in boxing, those were like generally the dudes that taught you how to fight and instructed you and trained you and things of that nature. So Nacy was one of the dudes that was a little bit older and had a lot more boxing experience. So when I first got there, Nacy was like one of the trainers and it was a Spanish dude from, from my block, short, older dude. His name, I believe his name was Spike. So Spike was also on the team and he was like one of the dudes that had a lot of boxing experience from the streets and 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 um he was another one of the dudes that that like helped out with the instructions of, of boxing shit. The instructor didn't do shit. He didn't teach us how to do shit but just he would just referee when we actually did the sparring. But other than that, he didn't do shit. He, you know what I mean? The dudes, the prisoners taught us how to box. And at that time, the prisoners that was teaching dudes how to box down in the boxing program was 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 um Nacy and and Spike, if I'm not mistaken. So Sha was on the boxing team. But so so Sha Sha Sha, that's my man Sha. Uh rest in peace to the homie man. Um, Sha was a good dude. I fucked with Sha heavy. That was my man the whole time. But Sha was an asshole in the sense that Sha was a troublemaker. We was all troublemakers, actually. You know what I mean? We was young. We was wild. We was making our bones and doing what we was doing. 
you know what I mean, trying to solidify a spot in history, I guess, in Elmira's dudes that was getting busy and shit. So Sha down in that boxing ring, Sha was a troublemaker because in the ring, he knew probably not too many dudes could fuck with him. You know what I mean? Because um, uh, not just because of the experience that he had with those uh, um, amateur bouts and shit, but that his hands was like that, you know? Like, I'm, there's no other way for me to put it but just straightforward like that. His hands was was nasty, son. And he was extremely fast. He was he was tall and he was lengthy. And he had a long he had long arms. So he had reach, long reach. And he knew how to keep dudes at bay and keep dudes off of him with that reach. So at this time, right, let me see, I might have been nineteen or twenty and Sean might have been a year or two younger than me. So if I was, let's say if I was 20, Sean might have been 18 or 19. He was just a little bit younger than me, not too far behind me. But um, so he, he, Sean could have been one of the instructors, the teachers, because his knowledge and his boxing IQ was so far advanced that if he chose to do that, that's what he could have done. But Sean just wanted to punch on shit. <laughs> That's all Sha. That's all. <laughs> this thing is crazy. That's all Sha. He was crazy. That's all he wanted to do was punch on shit. And he would always tell me, like, yo, now when we go down to the when we go down to the gym to spa, you know what I mean? Today I'm fucking such and such up. So Sha would always get in the beefs, right? With some of the dudes that were on the team, whatever for whatever petty reasons, whatever the little shit was, young boy shit or whatever, Sha would get in the beefs with dudes in population and then bring it down to the to the ring and convince the um the instructor to let, you know what I mean, let him spar with the dude that he had beef with. Like, yo, so we won't have to take it to the knives or the razors. And shit, this was his logic with his little squeaky voice. Because Sha had a high-pitched, squeaky voice when he talked. And when he was talking to the instructor, he's like, yeah, I'm saying, you know, you want me to be able to stay on the team? I won't have to, you know, we get into it with a knife or a razor and we go to, go to the to the hole and catch new charges and all that you kicked out from jail so just let us you know fight it out two or three rounds so he <laughs> he did that to a couple dudes on a couple of occasions until the instructor started getting hit to his shit and put a put an end to that but Sha was like a little um a little uh a little bully in that ring in the sense that you know he had more experience with dudes so the dudes that he didn't like or whatever, he would make sure that he kind of like <laughs> punished them and shit <clears throat> in the ring. And the shit was the shit was crazy because um the boxing program it entailed a lot. Like, you know, you gotta train your body and shit like that. It wasn't just about sparring. Before you sparred, the instructor we before you could even get in the ring and spar, you had to go through at least I think a 60 day period of just training in terms of getting your body right in your endurance because once you got in that ring the spa you know they wanted you to be in shape and it was actually on risk so anything that happened to you in that ring um you know you had to sign off on it was at your own risk so a lot of times um when we got to the to the sparring stages a lot of dudes would come down to the to the ring right and just and you know because they wanted to join the boxing team and and when they went through the training when it was time to step in the ring and they saw the way Sha and Macy and Spike and them dudes was throwing them punches and putting the beats on dudes I know at least seven dudes that signed right out the program before <laughs> before they ever even got in the ring. When they saw what sparring entailed and the blows the niggas was getting put on them, they was like, nah, 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 nah. I didn't I didn't come down here for that. I don't know what they came down there for. I don't know what they thought boxing and sparring entailed. But when they saw them ass whoopings that was being given out, they um they 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 signed out. So 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 let's say we got a boxing program of like 20, uh, 30 dudes and let's say maybe 10 dudes 
keep signing out like so we couldn't keep nobody down there because dudes didn't want to fight so we had a core of dudes like uh a solid set of dudes that was with the shit, that was in there training their asses off hard and, and sparring and fighting. So it was um, it was a little short Spanish dude named Fila. There was a the Spanish older dude that I'm refer- that I'm talking about named Spike that was doing the training. There was another Spanish dude I think he was from the Bronx named um, Pete. We used to call his name was Pistol Pete. We used to call him Pete. It was uh, uh, a a Muslim dude. Muslim brother in there by the name of Hassan. Um, it was Shah, Nacy. It there was a uh, Lele, dude from Queens named Lele. It's the homie right there. Um, uh, Winston, Jamaican West Indian dude. Winston, Winston was the only West Indian dude that I remember back then that was on the team. Uh, Jonathan, my man Jonathan, he was from Brooklyn, out of Fort Greene, and. Um, and I, and I think it was um, myself. And some dudes came later that stayed or whatever. I think the other dude, Knowledge from Brooklyn, from East New York, from, I think he was, he was called 18 Knowledge. I think he was affiliated with the 18 dudes back in the days. I think he came down to the boxing program and was with us at some point, but I can't really recall. But the main core dudes that was down there every day putting in the pain and the work that I was the dudes that I mentioned, all those dudes. So. In the boxing program, it, it, it didn't make a difference what what weight category you were in. You fought everybody. That's how. That's how. That's that's just the way. That's the way um, the instructor had it, and not just the instructor. That's the way Macy and Spike and them had it. Like, yo, all right, I, don't, I can't even remember. Back then, I was probably like one. I probably was one. 79, 180, So whatever weight category or weight class. Of, of fight and that would have placed me in at that uh, weight that's the weight class that I was in light heavyweight or whatever middleweight something like that middleweight probably <clears throat> that's the weight I was in and Sha was like my weight too because he was like you know a little bit taller than me but he he had a little no Sha was no, actually Sha wasn't my weight Sha was in a weight class under me because he was he was slim we was all young and fit and slim Nacy was a little bit shorter he um so I think they was Sean Nacy and it was like Sean Nacy and maybe yeah Sean Nacy and maybe Jonathan or whatever they was in the kind of same weight class Fila Spike and I think Fila Spike I think Pistol Pete and a couple other dudes they were smaller shorter they was in the same weight cat weight category Winston myself Winston myself maybe maybe Jonathan and um Lele. We was, I think we was all in the same weight category. So we used to all spar in the spar, mix it up with each other and shit. So, you know, we everybody was, we all started like around the same time shit outside of uh, Spike, Fila, and Sha. I think we all started at the same time. So we was all developing our little knuckle checks and our skills together. Like I said, we was learning from um, Nacy and Spike and them. And Nacy and Spike and them, the way they taught it, you know, they would teach us to, to, to spar and fight but you know because they'll be in the ring boxing with us but they would be holding back like i never seen Nacy really really give his all with none of the dudes that weren't um of his caliber or that weren't as experienced as some of the other dudes like shop like Nacy gave his all when he fought against spike because him and spike was you know what i mean around the same level and Nacy gave his all when he fought with Sha. So those was the best fights that I've seen up until that point while I was there. The best fights that I, that I saw was the spar matches between Nacy and Sha, Sha and Spike, or Nacy and Spike. All the rest of us, we was just learning and getting better and whatever, whatever. And um, all of that shit changed. <laughs> All of that shit changed and the game got, it got a little bit more serious and it got a little bit more aggressive when, when, when the Spanish dude, uh, uh, named Duran came, came to the boxing program. Yo. Yeah. No, no, I heard that sirens and shit in the background, so I was just, I don't know, I caught a flashback, I started looking around and shit, I'm in the crib chilling. <laughs> I heard the sirens, I'm like, what the fuck is going on? 
lives, boy, these lives, some of these lives we have in shell shock. But um, so I think like in '89. 89 or not, it had to have been before 90. So it had to have been in like 89, because I started in 88 and 88 going to 89. So at some point, like I, I believe 1989, the dude, um, Duran, came to the ring, I mean, to the boxing program. Duran was um, a Spanish dude and shit. Uh, I don't know if he was, he, I think he was Puerto Rican. I'm not sure if he was Puerto Rican. I don't think he was Dominican. He was a dark complexion, light complexion dude. He was kind of, he was kind of, um, you know, he wasn't short, but he was a little bit. He was like my height, maybe a little bit shorter than me, maybe an inch or two shorter than me. But you know, he was he was thin and wiry, and um, his name was Durant. And the thing, the funny thing about it is that he reminded me of the boxer Roberto Durant, a dude I used to be fighting and going at it with Sugar Ray Leonard back in the back in the eighties or whatever, not even whatever the fuck. Sugar Ray Leonard and Durant um, used to be going at it. So, unbeknownst to us. I didn't know, but he, the, 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 the instructor told us, I can't remember this instructor name, white dude and shit. He told us, he said, yo, we got a new dude coming down to the boxing program and shit, but this dude, I think he said was, had fought or sparred on a professional level. So he, he said that the dude, Duran, the new dude that was coming to join the team and the boxing program was, 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 um, was on a level of, of, of I guess, on a, like pro, pro level. I don't know if it was spawn or actual fights, but he said this dude had a lot of experience and that he was gonna be coming down to help uh, Macy and Spike um, teach the program, teach us how to box and shit. So I'm like, all right, cool. We got a new dude. So, I saw, so when he came down, I saw him. He, and he was somebody that I recognized from being in population because although we are on the boxing program, we still in population and we still go out to the yard and, and you know what I mean, and all that. You running around doing whatever you're doing in the jail. So I seen Duran on a couple of occasions. You know, he had glasses, quiet dude and shit, but he, he moved like, you know, so I told you, I pay attention to everything. I pay attention to movement. I pay attention to dudes' stances, how they stand just for you know, combat purposes, you're supposed to be alert and, and attentive to, to, to your surroundings, just in, you know, in order to survive places like prison and shit. So w when I would see him in population shit, I always thought to myself, like, yeah, that dude is always quiet and shit. I never really see him with a lot of people, a lot of dudes. I always see him like just walking around by himself. Cause I, you know, unbeknownst to me, I think he had just got to the jail too, like around that time. Cause I don't really, never remember seeing him like that much in population. It's like one minute he was just there. I, I, he wasn't, and then one minute he was there and I was just seeing him. So when he came down to the boxing joint, I was like, oh shit, that's the dude I would see walking around quietly and shit, but he just, had this little quiet kind of sinister like energy about him so i said all right let me keep my eye on something because you know this should be interesting especially he's supposed to be a, a pro so i think the first person that the instructor um put duran in to fight with was Sha. i'm not sure if it was that was the first person or whatever but i know when um <clears throat> when Sha and and and, and duran Got in that ring for the for that for that first time, and and spawn. That shit was like a fucking prize fight, like a Javante Davis and one of them shit, like one of those prize fights. I was like, oh shit. Okay, so remind remind you now. I just told you previously that Sha was like kind of like dominating down there with respect to his skills and shit. He was, you know. Putting the beats on dudes, us, he included, myself included, because of his experience. And um, so and I told you, he was like a little a little jerk, a little asshole, a little bully and shit. You know what I mean? And he was, you know, catching wreck on dudes. That was shot wreck. We was wrecked down there in the beginning stages when we was learning because, you know, he, he was better in terms of experience and uh that that we was wrecked for him in terms of not really being a, a serious challenge. So you're only as good as, right, your level of competition. So again, Shad's best level of competition at that time was Macy and Spike, but they would spar so much that they would know each other moves and shit like that. So that would be more like a, a chess 
chess a chess game than a boxing match. When Duran and Shaw were sparring, mind you, this is sparring. Them niggas was in there head hunting, bro. I, and so I was like, we was all looking like, what the fuck? It, it, that was like, that fight was like an actual prize, serious fight. But mind you, we on the same team. So that it really is not supposed to be like that. We're only supposed to be down there sparring and, and getting each other better, you know what I mean, and, and, and teaching each other. Nah, it wasn't none of that, homie. Not when when, when Shaw and Durant got in that in that um in that ring and 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 got to getting getting to it. So so Shaw was like the fastest dude I seen, right? With the hands. So if I would have had to if I was a referee or or, or or scorecard judge and I was um basing the um the match or the bout or the spar session off of off of a point system. Shaw would have easily outpointed uh, 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 Duran with respect to his hand speed, his jabs, and the punches that were connected to um to to Duran's face and his body and shit like that. But Duran was like <laughs> like this fucking animal, and so and he was older. He was like bro. He was older than us. So Shaw had hand speed, but not necessarily that knockout punch power so the stories that i heard about shot later on after we separated and went uh different ways and dude started working out and getting bigger and stronger he probably developed that knockout punch ability later on but then in 88 89 90 shot didn't necessarily have the knockout punch ability but he had the the like how can I compare him to like like Sugar Ray he had the Sugar Ray Leonard speed and he could just outclass you and and, and outscore you point wise so him and Durant going at it and shit he shot tagging shot tagging the shit out of Durant with it, with his speed and shit and I could see you know through Durant's movements and shit he's starting to get a little frustrated or whatever cause Sha Sha was the hit and move type of dude hit you and move hit you and move hit you and move he's not standing there like squaring up with you going toe to toe Duran wanted to go toe to toe like 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 let me feel your power and you feel my power and and whoever, let's see who could who could take it nah that, that's not how Sha fought Sha wasn't going toe to toe with him like that but but what happened was Duran was relentless, like, and I guess he must have felt that Shaw power wasn't enough to, to to put him on his ass. So he started becoming more aggressive in his in his forward movements and his attack of Shaw. Then he started kind of like timing Shaw shit a little bit, and and yeah, he caught Shaw with some shit that a couple times that um woke him the fuck up and had everybody because we was all there. All of us, you know, so it, okay, let me explain to you. It, the boxing ring in Elmira, right, in the boxing program, it wasn't necessarily a ring. You know how if you think of a boxing ring, you think of a ring, square ring with ropes and shit. It wasn't like that. We didn't have ropes, so we didn't have an actual ring. It was shaped like a ring, but it wasn't ropes. Instead of ropes, it was uh, padded, padded, padded walls. So it was like walls. In the, in the place of where the ropes would be, in, in like in a circular, in a in a semi, in a semi square, and then an opening area where you could step in and out of off of the mat. But it wasn't necessarily a ring with ropes. Not to my recollection, I don't think there was ropes there. Nah, it was padded walls. So Duran and shot going at it, and Duran was you know started catching shot with some nice little shit. And um, I think at one point. I think at one point they was going at it so much that um and and Duran was coming at him so aggressively and just kept coming and swinging and, and connecting. I think I think Sha might have stepped out of the mat or stepped off the mat out of the out of the ring and um like he kind of like hesitated before you know what I mean before he went back in and got back in and shit and and I remember Nacy was like because Nacy you know they was like I don't know if Nacy was one of the the refs in the ring or whatever, but Nacy was always close by when dudes was was sparring shit. 
and Nacy and Spike and all of them. So I guess they was like, yeah, nah, get back in there. The bell didn't ring because you had to fight. Uh, I think three minute rounds we was fighting. You had to fight the whole entire three minutes until the bell rang. So, um, so, so, so Duran, yeah, like I said, Duran hit Sha with a couple nice, uh, a couple nice shots and shit, and that kind of like probably woke Sha up a little bit. And Sha got, we called it getting on the bike. Getting on the bike meant when you when you backpedaling and 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 you getting away from. And an opponent that's coming at you aggressively and shit. You know what I mean? You backpedaling. You, you know what I mean? You you bobbing and weaving. You slipping, but you but you backpedaling. Really, you're not moving forward. And that's what Shaw was doing. Shaw was backpedaling and moving laterally around the space of the ring, o- away from Duran until he is set up, and then step in, hit him with a quick two, three piece combination and then step back out. And then Duran was like gritting his teeth, like biting down on his mouthpiece and punching his hands. He like, he would punch his hands. Like, come on, come on. Like, like you know what I mean? Come on, let's fight, come on. So they went at it and shit. And um, yeah, but like I said, the punches that Duran was throwing, it was looking like he was trying to, trying to like take somebody's motherfucking head off the shit. So I was like, oh, okay, cool. So. After that, after that, after that little fight that they had, you know, we, 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 Duran changed the, so Duran changed the way we started boxing down in that program. We was boxing originally like a team, you know what I mean? Just on some team boxing shit. But when Duran came down there that first time, and, and the first time he got in that ring and the way he was head hunting, and, and trying to knock niggas shit off their shoulders, we was like, oh shit, all right, it's somebody down here serious now. We can't, ain't no more fucking around, ain't no more playing. And um, we, 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 we started, we had to take that shit a little bit more serious because like I said, you had to get in the ring with everybody. And the way uh, Duran was so aggressive with, with Sha and coming at Sha, trying to take Sha head off like that, and dudes haven't seen Sha get busy. Nobody never really seen Sha under pressure in the ring like that from nobody. So to see that type of pressure being applied on him, for one dude was like, oh, okay. So if Durant can do that, we can do that too. So now we know how to get Sha. He don't like this type of pressure, whatever. So now dude started analyzing and shit. So what Durant did was, I don't even think he realized it. What he did was, when he came, he improved everybody in that in that team fight game because everybody started started taking it serious because um I don't know I, I can't say for sure if Duran was intentionally trying to hurt dudes but he was he was in there fucking dudes up like like if y'all want to fight and learn how to box this is how it is in the outside in the real world in the ring so we all that shit playing around and y'all horse playing that shit y'all was doing we not doing that. Yeah, he yeah, he he dropped a couple dudes, and uh, yeah, he yeah he did. Actually, that's a fact. Yeah, now that I, now that I think back on it, now he never dropped Sha. He never dropped Sha, although he tried. But Sha just was good. Sha's footwork was so good that um, he he couldn't do it. He he never dropped me. He tried to take my head off one time. I'll never forget with a left hook and shit. He tried to. I said, "Damn, dude!" Like. I, and I had a conversation with him outside the ring. I was like, "Yo, boy, you that punch was like you was trying to knock me into like a, a like another dimension, like like some almost like you know what I mean? Like, what's up? We good? Like, what's now? Nah, he's like, nah, bro. And he was the one like, nah. Now you gotta fight, like you know what I mean? It's, when you in this ring, it's not a game. This shit is like war. Like you, you, it's killer be killed. So he brought that mentality to the ring, and and now he changed it. So now when we was in there sparring with each other, bro, we was in there like like it, it was different. We was in there really now trying to hurt each other, like not uh-huh. necessarily hurt each other, but niggas was trying to knock these dudes' heads off because we was <laughs> like, damn, I'm not trying to get my head knocked off because Durant changed the game. It's head hunting season now down here and uh yeah so so and that was the crazy shit about the, the, the boxing program because the boxing program taught you how to box right and it was gearing you up for fights back then in the 80s late 80s early 90s they actually had uh uh gyms 
from the street that came into the prison with their boxers and fought the prison team. So we was so Shah Shah had connections with his old gym and his old trainers from Rochester. So I don't know how it was, but it, it, it somehow got set up that the dudes from Rochester was going to come into the prison to fight us. So, it, and Shah still knew the dudes that was on the team. So he was kind of basically telling us, yo, you, your weight class knowledge, you're going to fight these two, one of the two brothers named such and such. I can't remember their names, but he said it was two brothers on the Rochester boxing team back then. And from my weight class, I was going to fight one of the brothers. And that's how he was breaking it down, who was going to fight who. And Shy knew how they fought because he fought and sparred and trained with all of them. So he was preparing us for that. So we was preparing initially and originally to fight the outside dudes. When the red came to him, that shit went from training to fight the outside dudes to training to fight each other. Because, because, oh, so Sha was another, Sha was a cocky, prideful dude too. So Sha, I guess, he felt the way about the way, the way Duran was boxing with him coming at him and shit. And remember, I told you we used to be together in the yard and shit, in the army, and we used to be walking around talking and shit. And, and we was, one day we was out in the yard, we was talking and shit. And I think the, 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 the the, the conversation of, of, of the dude Duran came up. I think this was after the fight that Duran and Macy had and shit. Yeah. And and I think Sean was upset. He was like, yo, man, I think this dude's in here trying to hurt dudes and all that. So we gonna get our shit together. And the next time I get in the ring with this nigga, I'm fucking his ass up. Those are shy exact words to me, like, because he, I guess he, he felt like the Ram must have, like, was really trying to hurt dudes. And, 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 and I guess he probably felt like, like, like the Ram tried to, 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 to take his little shine as a, the best boxer down there. So he, in his mind, his, his mindset was the next time he get in that ring with the Ram, he gonna try, try, try to, um, fly his head. So now the instructor dude, I, I told you, he, you know, everybody didn't get to fight everybody every time we went down there. So different days, different dudes fought. So on this, so on that, on that occasion that I'm talking about, when when um, Macy and um, Durant fought, that was yeah, that was a that was another epic, that was another epic battle because I told you the top three dudes was Macy, Spike, and Shaw, if I'm not mistaken, and um, so the first time that. Macy and, and and Duran got there. I think we was all watching in anticipation to see how it was going to go down because we saw what happened with him and Shaw. Him and Shaw went at it crazy. And same thing, nothing nothing less. I think Macy was a little bit shorter than Duran, but Macy was fast. Like these dudes had hand speed. Macy and Shaw had that quick hand speed and footwork and they knew how to move. And um, but but Nacy was a little older, older dude. So he was with the toe to toe shit. And uh yeah, him and Duran was in there and they was they was they was rocking out. They was rocking out. They was both of them getting busy. They was giving it to each other. They was they was getting busy. And I think um so what happened was I, So what dudes used to do? Like what? Five rounds or something like that? No, we would do um three rounds. Three 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 minute rounds. So it was three three minute rounds, something like that. Three round, three rounds, four rounds, five. Rounds. I'm not. I could be mistaken. I'm not 100 percent sure, but I believe that we did three three minute rounds. Right. So I think we did three three minute rounds. So, um, Nacy and and Duran and they're going at it. And you said um, that shit at this point wasn't sparring at all no more. Not, not. Nah, this, that shit was Spartacus. It wasn't sparring. It was Spartacus. <laughs> it was, 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 was headhunting season. It was war because Duran came in there and changed the game with that with that headhunting shit. Y'all had headgear, huh? They gave y'all head. Y'all had headgear. Yeah, yeah, we had headgear. Yeah, we had headgear because you know we was we was uh, amateurs, but we wasn't well, we was preparing to become amateurs, and at that rank or whatever, you had headgear on. So we was fighting with the headgear on, but the headgear ain't really protect you from motherfucking hit you with some nice shit. So now getting back to the Macy and Durant fight, <clears throat> they going at it. Macy 
keying off, scoring with the speed or whatever. Duran doing this thing, digging, whatever. So at one point they got like in like a, in a head-to-head, like a toe-to-toe clutch. And and I think I think Duran caught Nacy with a a, a a a body shot. I'm not sure if it was a straight shot to the solar plex or or, or or rib shot, but he hit Nacy with a body shot, and so the perfect way for me to describe how that took place was the Javante <laughs> that Javante Davis fight that he just had, when Javante Davis hit that dude with that uh, I think Ryan Garcia he hit him with that left kind of like short up body shot, and they were still. S- s- Squaring up, but the dude Garcia took a couple steps back, and then he took a knee. That's the same thing with um that happened with when Duran and Nacy was 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 um sparring. So you know how when you fighting dudes, some dudes when they get hit, some dudes get actually knocked down, like dropped, not necessarily knocked out unconscious, but dropped, like you get caught flush and it catches you right. Your legs is buckling and you dropping. That's a drop. Like, you know what I mean? That's a knockdown. You know what I mean? Even though a, a knee is a not considered a, a, maybe a technical. Yeah, sometimes that pain take a little couple of seconds to set in. Right. And when that shit set in, is a wrap. That's a fact. So when, I, and to me, I, I, my recollection, I don't know, it could be a little off, but my recollection was, was I think he hit him with a left to the, to the, to the, to the side and then followed that up with a right uppercut dead center into the middle of the solar plexus. And you, I don't know if you've ever been hit in your solar plexus, but if you get hit flush in your solar plex, I don't care who you are, you going down if you get hit right with the right amount of force. And it's a delayed reaction too. So because Macy was still squared up with him, about to throw another punch, but I don't know, that shit must have registered from his mind to his body, and he just dropped and took a knee. So Nacy was so so experienced and such a, a good fighter that he knew to take a knee because if he wouldn't have took a knee, Duran would in that state, Duran would have probably went in crazy. But when he caught him with that second solar plexus joint, and and Nacy like stepped back and was about to throw another punch but thought about it and, and, and dropped down immediately to take the knee and if I'm not mistaken I think Duran was still swinging over his head when he bent down and took the knee so when he took the knee uh, Duran went to a neutral corner backed up and um, you know uh, Nacy stood down there for like a few seconds maybe I don't know if he took a whole eight count he probably took like a uh, a three, four, five count. And I'm not even sure if the, the instructor was counting back then. I don't know if he was simulating it like a real actual boxing joint if he was just sparring. But I know Macy took a knee and shit and um, got himself together. And when he got up, I saw fire and, 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 and murder and rage in his eyes. When he got up, so, so everybody's going to have their own version of it. And, and I'm quite sure when Duran hear it, he might have a different version of it. But from my observation, from standing on the side, watching, I was right there. When Nacy got up off that floor and got his wits about him, and they started again, yeah, he went to work. He went to work. When I say he went to work, I'm talking about the, his connection ratio to Duran's head and face was 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 exquisite. Like, and now Nacy's moving now because I guess he realized that he can't stand right in front of this dude and go toe to toe with him because of his power. So now Nacy is boxing, and when he got up off of that, off of that kneeling five, six, seven, eight count, whatever it was, he outboxed the shit out of the ring. It was left and right to the head, Bob slips, ducks, side step, right step, left step, weave, step back, bing, bing, bong, bing, bong, bing. And um, yeah, and from my recollection, Duran was still, you know, they was doing their thing, but Macy got off a little bit more. And, I, and the reason I'll say he got off a little bit more because I think I think the adrenaline and the anger and the frustration of, of, of him being downed like that probably took him to another 
a mental space and I guess he realized that, oh, this dude Duran is something serious and I can't fuck with him. Now I gotta bring my A game. And when he, when he brought that A game, man, I'm telling you, like, these fights in Elmira, Boxing program, bro, was like watching fucking pay-per-view fights today, bro. That's how busy motherfuckers was getting. So, like, so after that, you know, after those first few fights and shit, everything kind of like settled down and shit. I guess, I guess, I don't know. I guess Duran probably felt like he he kind of like proved his point or whatever or whatever he whatever. I don't know. I can't speak for another person's mindset, but it. It, the, the the tenacity of it all, I guess, kind of calmed down because the best fighters fought each other. You know what I mean? And 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 um and um and then then it was our turn. <laughs> so after uh you know after the Shah and Duran and then the Nacy and Duran, so you know we still training. It was taking periods of time we would take off. Um. And, and just do a lot of cardio. We used to do a lot of running. I think he used to have us running 15, 20, 25 miles every time we was doing the training. In addition to all of the stretches and, and the abdominal work and the medicine balls and all that other shit. So when it was time to get back in the ring, um, it was a little bit different. I think I think um, Durant kind of settled down a little bit more, but he still, he still, he still, he still was dropping dudes though because he, 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 I don't know, his fight style was just so different and he had such a, he has such, so much power in either hand that, you know what I mean, that he could drop you. I think he, I think he, I think he, I think he, I think he wobbled Hassan, the Muslim brother Hassan, and he may have, I'm not sure. I think he made. He, he, I think he dropped somebody. Another, another, another Spanish dude in there. Can't remember. I'm not sure if it was Pistol P. It wouldn't have been Fila because Fila was too small, too short. So I don't think Fila and Durant ever got the spawn. If they did, he, he, you know, he didn't go crazy with it because not like that. But I think I'm missing the dude. I, just, I think I'm missing the Spanish dude because Durant dropped somebody else in there. Like, like drop, drop. Not, not took a knee like he actually caught them flush <clears throat> with some shit and they went down and shit and I think I think that might have been Hassan too I think I think I know he caught Hassan with some shit and um he Hassan shit was doing the Elvis like when Elvis used to be dancing the Robbie legs and shit was he was doing the Elvis a little bit and I and and, and, and I remember I remember the Hassan and Duran fight specifically because Hassan had this really sweet one-two. Like Hassan's best punch was his one-two, one-two combination, left, right. He was right-handed. So I think he caught Duran with a couple of those good, solid one-twos, and Hassan was like the most uh, like physically cut up dude in the he one of them dudes that had the bodies that got chiseled. His, he had a body like Evander Holyfield. You know how Evander Holyfield was always chiseled and cut up? That's how Hassan was. And Hassan was like, he used to walk on the balls of his feet, almost like on his tippy toes, with like a little bounce to a step. So he was always like bouncing around with that one, two, one, two. And I used to always tell him when I used to spawn him, I used to like, yo, bro, you, when you be throwing that one, two, you be leaving your right hand out there. You stole the, the way they taught us, snap that right hand back. Like after you throw the punch, and I think I think he he did that one two on Duran, and I think he might have left one of them punches out there too long, and Duran caught him with some shit that 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 kind of like knocked his ass dizzy a little bit, and um and uh and um I think we had to we had to we had to stop that and be like hold on, and, and, and <laughs> I'm not sure how that shit happened if they continued or whatever, but I know yeah he. He caught, he caught Hassan with some shit, and then he caught, I can't remember which Spanish dude it was, but he caught Spanish dude with some shit, knocked him cold on his ass, rolled over on his back. So nobody in there, while I was there, got any drops under their belt. Nobody dropped nobody. It was always just straight up sparring, you know, dudes would get the better of dudes, I guess, on a point system, whatever, but nobody never got dropped or took a knee or nothing like that until Duran came. And when Duran came, Duran was the only one that that um that dropped somebody. I, until until we until probably like 
made it to 89, so probably like I'm on a team like a year or whatever. So I got my first knockdown and shit. And it was spectacular. So and so the funny shit was, like I said, Durant came, changed the game. Dudes started stepping their game up a little bit more, started training hard, working hard. Sean got into his bag. Now every time Sean and Durant fought, after that it was it was wars. So but now Durant Spike and Nacy are the ones doing the teaching. So it was a couple times Duran would have me, and me and Duran would be off to the side. You know, he'd have the the, the mitts, and I and I'd be punching, and he'd be working with me and teaching me certain shit and telling me like certain moves to do. And um, yeah, I ain't, so, so for my first knockdown, I used one of the fucking moves that that <laughs> that he that he that he showed me. And the dude kind of like walked into the punch though, you know, because he was a little bit, a little too cocky. He was swinging at me all wild and aggressive, and I was, you know, bobbing, weaving, stop side stepping and shit. And um, he 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 walked right into a, a overhand right. He walked right into the overhand right. He caught him flush on his chin. He fell on his ass and rolled rolled his feet rolled back. And I told you, Shaw was an asshole. So Shaw go runs over him. Stands over him and snatched his gloves off and was like, How many fingers do I have up? What? <laughs> Dude, and we like, so the, the, What'd he the, say? The, what you said? He snatched his glove off and said, What? Shot took his boxing gloves off, the sparring gloves, and was standing over the dude that I dropped on the floor. It was like, how many fingers do I have up? One, two, three. I was like, yo, Shaq, get out the <laughs> ring. Because Shaq ran in the ring and did that. You know, they, and, and, and so Durant, <laughs> Durant was mad as shit at the dude, too. Because I think this dude was one of the dudes that Durant was, was, was training, too. So Durant would train me one day. Spike would train me one day. Nacy would train me one day, and it, 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 it rotated like that. They trained everybody, not just me. And they, but it's about Sha. They didn't have to train Sha. They didn't have to train Spike. You know what I mean? Those three were the instructors training us, but Sha didn't need training because of his experience. But um, so I guess so. Right. So I guess it was teams. So I guess it was. I guess Nacy was training me that day. And, and 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 so I guess I was would have been sparring under Nacy and the dude Duran was training would have been sparring under Duran. So I guess it was I guess Team Nacy against Team Duran. And uh, and so <laughs> when I dropped son and he rolled over on his back like that and shot smashed off the glove and was counting over his head. Like they pushed out the ring, Durant. Like, Yo, get out the ring, shot. Stop fucking playing, whatever. But Durant had this look on his face of pure, utter disgust. See, you don't know these dudes, so you would have to know these dudes to to understand and and really, really get a a feel of what I'm saying. But Durant used to make these <laughs> these facial expressions that that would 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 clearly show his disappointment. So he didn't say it, but he had a he had a look on his face. Like at the dude that was like, yo, get your stupid ass up. <laughs> you make, you make it our team look bad. Get your dumb ass the fuck off that floor. Fuck you gonna let Stu Knowledge knock you out like that. He ain't, he ain't dropped nobody the whole time you've been dying. And you gonna get you gonna get dropped while you on my team. <laughs> so those was all the looks on his face. So maybe, right? Now in hindsight that I think about it, maybe that was why when me and Duran finally got our chance to spar. He probably tried to take take my head off. I tell you, he tried to take my head off with this wild left, like because and I and, and I was like in my mind, but I but I ducked it, I slipped it, and and he swung so hard, right, that because I thought he thought he he probably figured that he was gonna connect, but he swung so hard that when he missed, when I ducked and he missed his whole body went in the direction of that left hook and he his, he was off balance with his feet and everything and I hit him with the <laughs> I hit him with the <laughs> the right rock'em sock'em you know you remember those rock'em sock'em mm -hmm. you remember the rock'em sock'em the robots where you punch it and when you punch the shit the head pop up if you give it a good shot the, the head snap up on them shits the rock'em sock'em I had them shits as a kid that's why I remember it but that was funny. So when Durant swung that hard ass left and tried to take my head off with that shit and his whole body was off balance, when I pivoted, I hit him with that 
with that with that hard solid right and his <laughs> his head in my mind his head kind of his neck kind of extended upward a little bit and back like the rock of something <laughs> He started he started grinning and laughing like like smirking like oh yeah that was a good one. Yeah. But in my mind I was like, yeah, Madison ain't gonna try to really, really get his shit off because he he tried to take my head off miss and I and I caught him with the rock of soccer. I can't think of nothing else but that. The rock of soccer where I connected and his neck kind of extended a, a little bit and um and uh and, and then after that, I remember I told you about getting on the bike. So after I hit him with the rock and sock him, yeah, I got on my motherfucking bike until, <laughs> until the bell rang. <laughs> <laughs> so I know if he if he was if he ever remembered that shit and he was thinking about that shit, I know in his mind he was saying, yeah, now he's hitting me with that hard shit, that nice shit, snap my neck back and upward when I catch him with one of these shits right here. I'm punishing him. But the fuck I look like an idiot. You're not punishing me, dude. I already seen what you did to niggas. And I already know what you what you what you the look on your face told me in your eye. So see a person can hide whatever they want to hide, right? Through facial expressions or whatever, but you can't hide the look in your eyes. You know what I mean, last that 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 momentary instantaneous spark of of a fire flame and aggression no matter what type of look you have on your face your eyes tell the truth so although he was smiling and smirking when i rock him sock him up the look in his eyes i saw like fire dangling i was like and i said yeah and he was biting down harder on his mouthpiece i said yeah he gonna try to hit me with one of them good old shots but it didn't happen not 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 the day homie not me. I was on that bicycle. I was bobbing and weaving and keeping them back with the jab and shit like that until that ring, until that bell rang. Because I was, I think that was the third round when that incident happened. And I got the fuck up out of there and I was smiling out of that shit. Yeah. And he was giving me the nod like, yeah, I was a go one. But when I catch you, <laughs> when I catch you, you better be ready. But, um, so I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened to Duran. I don't know what happened. He just, I think in like 89 or 90, no, I think it had to have been 90. Before the fights, I, I caught a, a ticket, some shit, an incident, and I and I got I was on keep lock and I and I missed the fight. And I missed the fight. Shy and them fought, Shy won. I think Nacy won. Um it was it, it, uh, I, I don't remember Duran fighting, and I don't remember hearing the dudes coming back to the block that was watching the fight in population. I didn't hear about, I don't remember them hearing, I don't remember hearing them say that Duran fought. Whether I don't know what happened to Duran. Duran just disappeared, right? But so here's the thing. Here's the thing about, <clears throat> one of the things that I wanted to point out about that boxing program. So I told you, before I even started talking about the boxing program, that Elmira was one of the wildest um, prisons that I've never been in, in terms of, you know what I mean? The violence and, and 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 how dudes was getting busy, stabbings, fights, assaults, robberies, all sorts of shit. Gay shit. It was just that shit was just a plethora of, of madness. But the boxing program taught us taught dudes a lot of discipline. Taught us discipline, taught us how to use our hands, taught us how to move our feet and shit like that. And those lessons that I learned from from the, the little the short Spanish dude, Spike. Um, Macy sparring with Shaw and my other dudes on the team that I was sparring with and Duran that shit helped me navigate through prison like for the rest of my bed when I went to other spots and and, and because you, you only get better like when I went to other prisons when I left the hell they didn't have boxing programs or whatever but they might have had heavy bags or whatever or just people that you beat the shit out of and take advantage of. Not take advantage of, but you beat the shit out of because they don't know how to box. A person that knows how to street fight, right, that can fight, probably won't fare that well against an experienced boxer. A person that has some experience boxing. So now I was on a boxing team a year and a half
Ayo, hey, Brownsville, Brooklyn in the building. You already snowmobile. Know what I mean? Check that new video. BK Panamami featuring the guard LAZ. You heard it's called Don't Ask and it's fire. And I filmed the video. Let's get it. Hey yo, make sure y'all check the first two episodes of my life story, Kids With Guns, on the channel now. You heard I'm working on the third episode, but two episodes is out. So if you ain't see those, you slipping, slacking, and lacking. And that's a fact. Get at me. Z-Lord. One on three.